Say yay. Yay. Sorry, you didn't miss anything. Did she? No. No. Didn't miss anything. Thank you, Bree. Yeah. Any any time. It's it's one of those semesters that I, that will probably happen more than once. So I'm glad. I I thought it just went dark because um I had walked away. No, you're good. All right. So acknowledging sources and avoiding plagiarism, chapter 50. I told her that I had you guys revise a main point for your paper. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. But she uses a textbook in her class with her college kids called The Little Seagull Handbook. And if you ever have to purchase this book for a class, it would probably be worth it, especially if your teacher's gonna work out of, out of it a lot. But you've got this book, and it, this is basically even as you look at it, see the same colors and everything? This is a mini version of our textbook that doesn't include any readings, okay? So she was talking about the fact that she learned through her little seagull handbook that there's real specific things suggested in this book when it comes to quotations. Because I was, I, I was telling her I was you guys were having a hard time deciding what to directly quote and what to summarize, or not necessarily summarize, but to paraphrase, okay? And I actually looked this up after she told me, but I wrote this note on my board when she was in my room yesterday. So I would love for you to write this in the margin on your first page of 491 because our, our first part of our page talks about acknowledging sources, that it talks about sources that need acknowledgement, sources that don't need acknowledgement. But in the Little Seagull Handbook, they're more succinct. They don't talk about signal phrases as much. But I think this will help you all as you move forward to writing research papers for other classes. So. I write it in my book. If you want to write it some, somewhere else, this is their advice. Okay. Their overall advice, use direct quotes sparingly. Okay, I don't have that on the board, but you can write that as a heading. Uh, direct quote, directly quote only sparingly. And these are the situations that the Little single ha Seagull Handbook suggests, which I trust because it's the same textbook writer as ours. Directly quote when you just can't say it better yourself. Directly quote when you just can't say it better yourself. I'm going to move this over and show this to whoever's watching for a second. Directly quote when you just can't say it better yourself. And another thing you could write there is directly quote when the, this goes right under it, the wording is worth repeating. The wording is important, okay? Wording is worth repeating. All right, the next one. <coughs> You'll know what I mean by this. The next one I just wrote down when you're, I just wrote down expert credentials. If you want to add to that, you can say when quoting an expert with credentials. Does that make sense? So like the, the uh, example that Mrs. Gray used with her kids when she was teaching this this week if you're writing an argument about the coronavirus, okay, and you're gonna quote an expert who was talking about the medical side of COVID-19, who would you quote? Dr. Fauci, right? So you would definitely want to use Dr. Fauci's words because we all know that he's a credible source on that topic, okay? So just can't say it better yourself, the wording is worth repeating, expert credentials, wear a mask, whatever. Um, 
the next one. Okay, this is interesting to me. Okay, remember when you are writing an argument, I'm sure Mrs. Gray taught you this even though you didn't get all the way through your paper. You know that when you're writing an argument, when you are writing a position paper, you acknowledge the other side, correct? Okay, so this goes with this. Um, you want to, if, if you want to quote someone whose opinion differs from the mainstream, okay? You, you, you would use a direct quote to acknowledge someone whose opinion differs from the mainstream. And that's what, there, there's a lot of people who would disagree with Dr. Fauci, right? I'm sure you have some people popping into your head. We don't have to name names. We'll just keep it at that, all right? Someone whose opinion differs from the mainstream. And this is the last one. Any source that you want to emphasize. So the way that Mrs. The, the example that Mrs. Gregg gave, if we were writing a paper about something to do with co the coronavirus, a source, a good source would be what the CDC, right? Um, WHO, World Health Organization. Okay, so uh, she, the example she used yesterday, if you were writing something about medicine, you would quote Johns Hopkins, or you would quote uh, the Mayo Clinic some big time source that everybody's gonna recognize as being credible, okay? So if you, a source you, source you wanna emphasize. So remember when we looked last week at that Harry S. Truman, the, at, at the sample MLA paper in our textbook? This really follows along with, I bet if we would go back and we would look at the direct quotes, because there weren't a ton of them, I bet it really follows this. Because remember how it was, it was actually introducing in signal phrases the different newspapers who had reported at the time, and there are a few direct quotes, and then it really follows that. So, and, and I'm glad I talked with Mrs. Gray about this, and, and you know, she said they recommend to use direct quotes sparingly, okay? Just, so just throwing that out there for future reference if you have a professor that's not real specific. Okay, you, and, and she said, she read all the way through the chapter in the little single handbook, and she said what they, they emphasize is paraphrasing, not summarizing, because we learned that last week. Summarizing doesn't add the synthesis, right? But you can paraphrase from different sources and synthesize their information. All right, so flashback to last week when we were talking about uh, your research papers. Speaking of your research papers, your revisions. Okay, so my full intention was to grade them, start on, on Sunday, and grade them yesterday when I had free time at school. I have to tell you what I did with my sophomores. My sophomores, I might have told you, they did a podcast. Remember you guys did a podcast probably about Rome? Did you guys do yours about Rome? Yes, because I listened to yours. Yes, and I listened to yours. And you guys paired up. Right, you worked with a, a partner on that fun little unit. Introduce you to podcast, blah blah blah. Well, this year because of COVID, they couldn't pair up. So over the weekend, I was dealing with fifty-five podcasts, <laughs> and I was doing dealing with fifty-five students who each evaluated eight podcasts. So if you guys remember, I had you evaluate each other's and then I averaged the scores from that and then you got a score from me and you got a score from your students. It was a nightmare. It took me like seven hours on Sunday to do it. I started at 1.30 and I worked until seven hours after that. I'm like, screw it. I'll do the senior stuff tomorrow. Well, then Mrs. Gray walks in. <laughs> And I get, I get Emma's paper, which I was expecting oh, yeah. Emma's paper. That, that took a little while. So you will be pleased to know I got your rubric done. I did that yesterday. So I want to show it to you and see if you guys want me to change anything because I, I, I want to show you what, I, what you're going to get your points on. So yay for me for getting the rubric done. Boo for me for not getting beyond that. So I knew you'd have to Ah. I hate it. I hate being behind.
because what's going to happen is I'm going to have two papers for you guys to grade up hanging over my head, and I hate, hate, hate when that happens. It gives me stress. So here is your rubric. Anybody see my? There it is. Thank you. Just kidding. Which one? Uh, memoir. Yep, yeah, we're going to talk memoirs soon. Yes, we're going to talk memoirs soon. And actually, you're going to get a revise them. You're going to get a change them in just a minute. So I'm going to show you this. Then we're going to go to this. Then we're going to talk about memoirs. I have to get a lot done on the days when I have everybody here. So here we go. This is what it looks like. See, I don't have any numbers in here there yet. I haven't figured it out. But I did this right before I left yesterday. So is your outline sourced? And is it detailed? Um, the second part of what you had to turn in was your revised main point. I'm going to look at organization, fluency, and conventions. And then when it comes to your sources, I'm going to look at signal phrases, synthesis, and citations. Then I'm going to look at your work cited, and hopefully I can just write in there perfect. And your original main point, I hope I can write in there, is different than the revision. That's what I'm hoping, okay? And I literally am going to hand write these on a piece of paper like this so I can go through it quick. I'm not going to grade them. That, that was why I thought I would be able to get them done yesterday and Sunday night, because I'm going to grade them quick, OK? But I still haven't figured out how I'm going to do the points yet. It'll be fair. Just know it'll be fair. But that's, that's what your rubric's going to look like for your revision, all right? So that's that. And I also want to show you something that now I won't show it to you right now, I'll show that to you later. We have a memoir sample that we are gonna look at, but we're gonna talk about memoirs in just a little bit. Let's go back to chapter 13, page 156, 157. Anybody watch TV anymore at all? Are you guys ever at home with the TVs on? Like regular network TV? Okay. No, I, I know I wasn't either when I was your age. Anybody have any idea on regular network TV right now what comes on every time there's a break in the programming? Commercials about, oh my gosh. I can tell you anything you want to know about Joni or Green 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 and there was a new one yesterday, so I was like, thank you, because I had the other one memorized. My favorite one, the one that comes on every single time, is that guy who lives in Nebraska somewhere, and he's like, Teresa Greenfield. Yeah. Greenfield. Yeah. Is that like, da 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 are you sick of all of the arguing that is going on right now? Oh, it's just, it, it was like that four years ago. You guys were in my room. You guys were soft. No, you, that was just two years ago. You were the eighth graders in 2016, right? Four years ago, it was the same. It's the same every time there's a presidential election. And you know what? Because we get, I, I think you guys are like me, I get the Sioux City channels. So I hear about all the Iowa candidates that I am not vote, can't vote for anyway, you know? So arguing is honestly what our nation is based on, right? Pretty, pretty much, I mean, that's, we can, that's arguable. But arguing is something that happens around us all the time. And would you say, and, and I'm not talking always about the loud yelling type of arguing, I'm talking about somebody trying to make a point and trying to get others to go along with you, to believe that you have a valid point. Isn't it something that we do all day long? Teenagers, who do you guys argue with? Sister, parents. Ashton, <laughs> coaches, Mrs. Yeah. Oh, Slade, Mrs. Slade, you argue with your coaches? 
Um, Chase does a lot. <laughs> Chase does. Yeah. Okay. Miss C. Who else? Just say it. It's fine. We can say. Uh, what about Miss Eastland? You guys that are in dance, dancers, Sierra girls, no. Um, coaches, volleyball coaches. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's change it. Not from arguing, but voicing your opinion. Yeah. Okay, you have to. Why? Because he's like, oh, I need to be on the Xbox, blah, blah, blah. And then it's this is your little brother? Yeah. Littlest brother? Yeah. Okay. Like, Dude, when I was that age, I went outside and tried to find the balls and break a bunch of trees. So you, you play <laughs> parent with him? Yeah. Yeah, you argue with your youngest brother a lot. Who, who would rank the top? Let, think about who you, would, who you argue with the most. See, I, and I'll, don't, don't raise your hand yet until I list them all. Friends, <laughs> do we want to lump all of family in or do we keep siblings separate? Siblings, siblings. siblings. okay. Uh, what did I say first? Friends. friends. Siblings. Parents. Gotta have friends, siblings, parents. Teachers. Teachers, yeah. And coaches, let's stop there. Okay. We had oh, oh yeah, yeah, significant other. Oh boy. You can raise your hand twice. Since we yeah. have so many. Uh, how many of you say that out of everyone that you argue with or have difference of opinions with or try to get your views out there, would say that it's your friend is your top four of you? Would Becca say yes to that one too? Becca, they're talking about you. Oh, I need to I need to plug in. Okay, so friends is kind of up there. Uh, siblings. Siblings is way up there. Siblings, okay. So I'll say siblings. Yeah, Reese is different now in your house, right? Because you're the only one there. Siblings. Yes. Uh, parents was next. Kind of. I think there were fewer. Oops. Parents. Yes. What did we say first? Friends. I think you had fewer friends than parents. Let's skip to significant other because I am. <laughs> okay, that's around in here. But teachers. Teachers. Somebody mentioned teachers. I think you do it differently. Yeah. Only no. with Miss Lynn. Yeah. Just because we're related. Teachers down here. <laughs> what was the other one? Coaches. 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 Miss Fisher. Miss Fisher. for coaches. Okay. Do I tell my mom to call a teacher or parent? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where do you argue with her the most? Yes. <laughs> you, she's not a teacher of yours, though. No, she's not one of my teachers. But okay. she'll coach you in mock trial and cheer. And cheer. Okay. Do you argue you with your mom more in cheer person. or over personal things? I mean, that's what what, what I would vote for. Pretty even. Yeah. Because the family can literally like turn everything out, like put a little sheet like dartboard, write everything out. Well, and think about this. Mr. Wentz doesn't teach in the classroom anymore, but some pe do some people fill the role of both a teacher and a coach? Mm -hmm. Think about that. And, and let me ask you this. I, and I, I know that it's fun to talk about arguments as down and dirty, you know, knockout punch sorts of thing. But isn't argument, and if you go back to, to page 156, Arguing a position, would you would you guys agree? It's, it's basically telling someone how you feel, telling someone what your views are, okay? Telling you what your what your position is. You have to have a clear and arguable position. You have, they have to you have to know they have to know what your thoughts are. They have to make sure they understand the whole situation. And you have to give them good reasons for the way that you feel that are backed up by convincing evidence, okay? 
And whoever you're arguing with, you know what's important to them, so therefore you appeal to their values, correct? Is that important? And you have to act like, you, have, you can really believe me on this, so you have to have a trustworthy tone, and you have to be able to say, I know you might not agree with me on this, but, right? Would you agree that all of those things come into practically, without you even knowing it, would you agree that all of those things come into every discussion about opinions that you have with anyone? Yeah. Do you guys appeal to your dad differently than your mom when it comes to arguing? It's because you know how their mind works, right? And you know that certain people think certain things are more important than others, so you go to that one if they value that thing just like you do. Moms, when it comes to clothes, right? Or is it dad? I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? So I don't want you to think about argument as those attack ads that are on TV right now, because they're everywhere. And there's argument, anytime you open social media, there's argument, correct? Is arguing, meaning voicing your opinion, sharing your thoughts, is it necessary for everyone to do that? Yes, I, in our in-service yesterday, I talked about how much I valued you guys because when we were working on that assignment sheet for the memoir last week, you were saying, are you sure you want us to do this in present tense? Are you sure? And you convinced me. Because people that I know are good writers who work hard on what they do amongst everybody else in the room were saying, it's going to be really hard to do it that way. You convinced me, right? It was worth speaking up. Yes, I hope. We'll see. And, and, and that's the thing, I was, I was working with Emma's paper yesterday, and I pointed out she was going back and forth, and I, thought, I said, pick one and stick with it. Is that what you ended up doing? Picking one and sticking with it? We'll see. Anyway, I want to get to those papers here in just a minute. So, if you look in the arguing position chapter in your textbook, they're about on the same page. It's going to talk about arguing position. So, for those of you who are gone for tomorrow, for those of you who are gone tomorrow, I'm going to have you read two essays. Okay, so I'll, I'll mention them here. So here's here's my plan. For everyone, for everyone, okay. The first page, the intro, two paragraphs there. It says arguing a position. And there's an essay below, below it with a title that is designed to catch your attention. Organ Sales Save Lives. Think about that. Organ Sales Save Lives. Do we sell organs in our country? You're going to find out. Okay? So, a lot of times when you're advancing your position, you have a, sort of a catchy, catchy title there to, to get people's attention. So, for tomorrow, everybody's going to read the first two paragraphs. Everyone is going to read, Organ Sales Will Save Lives. Move forward. It's a little bit long, okay? And here's what I want you to do in your annotation. You don't have to write this down because I'm going to show, show you where to find it. I'm not going to ask you to outline organ sales will save lives, but you're going to have to tell me what her clear and arguable position is. You're going to have to tell me what the background info is. All this stuff's in your book, so you don't have to write it down. Don't write this down because it's in your book. You're going to have to tell me what her reasonings are. You're going to have to give me her evidence. You're going to have to show me how she does this, and you're going to have to talk about all this stuff, okay? So you're going to read it, and as you're annotating, you're going to have to, you might want to keep notes on a separate piece of paper, 
You might run a right position and then hand write it down. That's probably what I would do if I were doing this assignment as you. Okay, because we're going to go over all of it. So everyone for tomorrow, if, if you're going to be in class tomorrow, we're going to go over organ sales will save lives. Those of you who are not in class tomorrow, you're still going to have to know the paper because we're going to refer to it a lot. Okay? So organ sales will save lives. Then go forward. The next one is our blind spot about guns. We are not going to do that one. Sorry, gun people. We're not, we're not going to do that one. Um, we're, it's, I tried it once, and I don't like the way that it's organized. It doesn't kind of fit with the way the textbook teaches us to organize. And the next one, if you have the old version of the book, there's an essay in there that's called Black Friday, Consumerism Minus Civilization. We're not going to read that one either. But if you have the new textbook, there is an, uh, and, and you guys need to read this one. Everybody does. See on page 165 with the new book, there's, there's one called You Can't Talk to Your Professor Like This. Okay? New book people read You Can't Talk to Your Professor Like This. Who is going to be gone tomorrow that does not have the new book? Emma? Who else? Becca doesn't. Becca doesn't. Yeah, Becca. Here's what I'm going to do. The two essays in this chapter that we're going to talk about as a group are Organ Sales Will Save Lives and You Can't Talk to Your Professor Like This. I have the electronic version of You Can't Talk to Your Professor Like This. It was first published in the New York Times. I will put that in Canvas for all of you so you can read it electronically if you so choose. Okay, so you, everybody, not just Emma and Becca, will be able to see uh, You Can't Talk to Your Professor Like This in Canvas. Okay, um, so I will see that. And so for those of you guys who are gone tomorrow, you're gonna have to be able to talk about these things about both essays, okay? Those of you that are present tomorrow, those of you that are present tomorrow, try and at least read through the organ sales will save lives by class tomorrow. I think we'll work as a group on talking about these things and writing them down, okay? And tomorrow in class, the you, those people that are here tomorrow will talk about, I'll give you time to read, you can't talk to your professor like this, and then you'll have time to work on this on your own. Does that make sense? So two different lesson plans. Everybody understand what's clear? Okay, so here's, and, and go to the end of, of all the essays. The professor one's kind of long. Okay, so you're on either page 170 or 169. That's where I got these bullet points. Okay, so key features of arguments. All of these things are explained more, and this is very, very valuable information. So read and annotate 169, 170, those two pages stop where you get to a guide to writing arguments. So you don't have to go beyond that. That makes sense? Okay. So we're basically doing introductory work today on tomorrow on arguments. We're gonna read a few. We're, we're gonna read two. Okay, I might have some more short ones for you. Okay, we have just enough time left for what we're gonna do for the rest of the period. I actually wish we had a little bit more time. I want you to open up your Google Doc of your memoir because I want to give you a chance to, to tweak it a little bit more and resubmit if you so choose okay and I want I'll, I'll tell you why All right and I wish we had more time but we don't and I am going to have juniors coming in for study hall so I won't have time to talk to people after class like I normally do Um, 
Here you go. I'm going to read this to you as you open yours and listen to it. And I want you to think about, I want you to think about whether he stays in the past or present, okay? And if he jumps around or not. Three years ago already. Life in the fast lane. It's a warm spring afternoon. The grass has finally turned green after a cold snowy winter. There's a slight breeze blowing over the hot rubber of the track. I am just a seventh grader who comes over to the public school from St. John Lutheran School to participate. Our school is too small to have its own track. Johnners is what they call us. This is the first track beat I have ever participated in and the nerves are high. Finally, it's time for me to run my race. Check in for the 800 meter run here, shouts some guy with a clipboard and a pen. Thoughts race through my mind as I wait for my name to be called. Andrew Lett, he yells. Yep, I respond. Heat one, lane two, he tells me. <coughs> I start to pace. Even though I stretched, I still feel tense. Walking back and forth, is what he meant, seems to calm me so I keep going. I can feel my adrenaline rising. The car starter calls out, 800 meter run, heat one. I find my lane and wait for further instructions. He then tells us to go to the first blue line in our lane. I jump up and down a few times to loosen up one last time. The starter climbs a little white step stool on the side of the track with his cap in, cap gun in hand, he hollers, runner to your marks. Everyone steps up to their line. Set. I take one last breath. Bang. And you know what my favorite part of that whole paragraph is? The little white step stool. <laughs> See how the little details make such difference? Plus, he's got good dialogue. Everyone is sprinting to take the lead. My long legs stride as I try to keep up. There are two small orange cones at the end of the first 100 meters. Once I pass the cones, I merge with other runners into lane one. Everything blurs by as I focus on the person in front of me. I hear my coach in the background, hip to cheek, Drew. I start to think about the way I am running. I can hear myself panting, puff, puff, puff. The sound of my breathing is rhythmic, almost like staying alive by the Bee Gees. Also, one thing that he's doing really well, see how he has some short little choppy sentences that don't have a long one after that? It adds interest, okay? The beat helps me pace myself. I'm approaching the end of my first lap. I hear a bell ringing, which means this is the final lap. I begin to pick up the pace. The feeling of fatigue sets in. My legs are dead. There is only one person in front of me. My heavy breathing gets louder. I hear my coach again. Come on, Drew, finish strong. The runner in front of me maintains his distance. My mouth feels sticky and dry. We approach the 200 meter mark. All of a sudden, I feel a kick. My feet move faster and my arms pump harder. My opponent seems to be getting closer. The crowd in the grandstand start cheering. This motivates me to run even harder. I am now neck and neck with the other runner. Everyone is screaming, go, go, go. The finish line is only 50 meters away. I start to pull away from him. I give it everything I've got, cliche, cliche. My arms are pumping furiously. Can you picture Drew Lett running right now? Okay. I cross the finish line and a wave of relief washes over me. Gasp and out of breath, I make my way off the track. My feet feel like they are on fire in my shoes from the friction. Here's the alliteration. He's had that a lot. He, Emma and I were talking about that. Friends run up to me and congratulate me on winning the race. Not even I thought that a six foot, 200 pound kid could run long. There you go, for Drew. Anyway, oh, I'm not done, sorry. <laughs> I will always remember running races like these. Even though I dreaded running the race, the sense of accomplishment and satisfaction of running a good race far outweighs that dread. He's got a lot of repetition here, but that's okay. Running races like these have taught me how to persevere through tough times. Once you get through the hard times, there will be good times, blah, blah, blah. He could have lived without that last paragraph. There you go.
probably, there was my rubric at the time because I didn't grade it the way I do now. I just do it like that. Anyway, that's cool that he saved it. So I don't know if he did it like that, but that was an old, they call them exemplary text that um, maybe with me reading aloud, it might give you some ideas. Okay, here's what I wanted to suggest to you, and I know you're going to run out of time. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But what I didn't talk to you about last week as you were just getting started to write your paper is adjectives and lively verbs, okay? If we had the whole class period to devote to this, here's what I'd have you do. And this, this takes us, you remember when we did our book reports when you were sophomores, you read your books and you wrote a book report and we highlighted adjectives and stuff? Something real similar. Go through and look for adjectives. And if you don't have very many adjectives, you need to add adjectives. That's what makes memoirs great. So you, you have to describe not only, I, Emma, I don't know if you remember anything that I suggested, but you know, she talks about riding in her car. Uh, are you in the front seat or the back? Um, not that, that those are adjectives, but yeah, it is an adjective. You know, um, adjectives to, to add how you're feeling. Um, the, the coarseness of the pavement. The shrill squeak of the seat as, it, as you bounce your leg up and down against it or something like that. Add some adjectives in there to bring your paper to life. And Drew had the alliteration in there. I know you could hear it several times. You don't have to add in alliteration, but if you're thinking of adjectives, maybe make it alliterative with what it, what it describes. I mean, don't spend hours and hours doing this, but adjectives bring things to life, as do action verbs and lively ver verbs. I moved this over for Wiley and Reese the other day um, instead of saying you walked, maybe you staggered, okay? Instead of something's pretty, maybe it's glamorous. Um, think of the Emma's paper that I looked at yesterday. Um, walk, the guy was walking, those hunters were walking up to your car, they weren't running, but instead of running, they bolted, they darted, they sped, okay? Just think of what I would do is I would highlight your adjectives and I would highlight your verbs or at least look at them and see if you can make them better. If you don't have very many adjectives, add some. Okay? The other thing that I would do, and I know you guys have been home. I know it's a busy time. I'm going to give you until class time tomorrow to resubmit this. I'll, I'll change the due date on it. I'll make it till tomorrow because I want this to be really good. And I know that last week you were revising and I don't know, last week was weird. I don't know why, but um, I, I just want you to make it better if you so choose or have time to do that. Um, and you, this is where I was going to have you read it aloud to somebody in class today. That was my original plan was to have you literally sit and read it to somebody. Tense. Pick a tense and stick with it. Okay? In fact, I, I will tell you, I wrote up a little journal for my sophomores about living on an island and moving on an island and blah, blah, blah. I wrote a paragraph or so. And as I was reading it aloud to them, I switched tense two or three times. And I was embarrassed. <coughs> but I had done it fast and I hadn't gone through and proofed it. So please know that that tense shift, it's, it's easy to do. I write all the time and I, I switch my tense back and forth on that one assignment. So don't think that it's you. Just know, just know, and Mrs. Gray and I talked about this yesterday too, um, writing really is a process. We talked about that after your research paper. You just have to know that you can always, always make it better, right? And the other thing that I want to say before I, I lose you, oh, now we have no clock for the day. Um, we had in-service yesterday, and the person that was here from the ESU was talking about how to 
about the importance of feedback. Actually, that was one thing that we talked about, and that made me feel good because I, I think I do pretty well on that. And it, she, she talked to us about how to encourage and instruct and help even the very best students, you know, gave us all these, all these hints. And it made me feel good because as I was looking through and thinking about my students, I'm so blessed by you guys. Never complain. You ask questions. You want to improve. And aside from some of you having, and I think you would agree with me, some self-confidence issues in your writing, who would fall into that category of having self-confidence issues in your writing? You are well on your way to becoming better writers, and you have already shown through nine weeks that you're getting better. And just know you're never going to be perfect, because no one is. But just know if we can work toward getting better with everything that we do, we're winning. Okay? Seriously. So, and I knew that you guys would cut me some slack on not having that stuff graded. And I wasn't going to stress myself out because I had dinner with my family last night, the belated birthday thing. And I got home at 8 o'clock. It's like, they'll be fine if I don't have it to them. So, probably tomorrow, actually, when the, for those of you who are here, I'm probably going to let you guys work, and I'm probably going to sit and grade some of your stuff if that's okay. So, is that cool with everybody? All right. I'm happy to have you on as many days that I do. Yes. Yes, yes. And, and if you do have questions about your memoirs, let me know. You guys want to say bye to Becca? And I'll put it out there for Justin, too. Thank you, Bree, for having me turn it on. I haven't recorded.